What's going on guys? I could have back another video. Here today to give you my reaction to this new <coughs> uh, A Boogie Freestyle. I know it uh, took me a while to get to this. This came out a while ago. I am currently in the process of uh, reviewing, uh, what is that, Better uh, Better Off Alone. Uh, currently in the process. It's a really long album. Really, really long album, but we're getting through it. Getting, you know what I'm saying, getting through the way we got to. But we got this freestyle here. Um, I... I want to be clear, um, I won't always be getting political on my channel, and this is obviously a musical channel, but I will never ever shy away from speaking my mind and getting off what I need to get off. Free Palestine and Diddy is a terrible human being, has always been a terrible human being. Uh, yeah, and if you disagree with those things, I don't know what to tell you, like, yeah, nah. But uh, just just had to use my platform. Go, you know, do more research than I've done. Uh, look into what's going on. It's getting really bad out there. Colonialism is never okay. I don't care what kind of guys, what kind of anything you put over it. Colonialism and genocide are never okay. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. And it's interesting because A Boogie, a lot of people say that he's not known for freestyling, but if you've really been paying attention, you'll know that 4-Minute Convo was a freestyle, you know that he freestyles with Don Q, and he's definitely got the ability to have witty, catchy lyrics, um, and even has some interesting metaphors and similes sometimes. I've even you know noticed certain rhyme schemes that he's had that have been somewhat complex. So I think he's definitely had the foundation for freestyling for like a really long time. Uh, sometimes I wonder if for the melody people who like the melodies are everything, you know, because Drake, obviously you see him on the screen, Drake, Drake like has melodies, but he also just straight raps. A Boogie are, is one of those like always singing type of artists. You know, you, you wonder if they're going to get caught up in the singing, but we're going to see how it go. We're going to see how it go. Happy to be back making videos, man. Happy to be back making videos. We outside. We outside. I'm going to bite this up. Tight, tight. Yes, sir, baby. On the radar radio freestyles. Yo, the legend uh, in the building. My glorious. Let me not, let me not even glaze. I mean, let, me, let me not even glaze. Let me not even glaze. Uh, let me not even glaze, but uh, yeah, nah, A Boogie in the building. Uh, if you don't know, I definitely currently have A Boogie as the best artist in New York for the 2020s decade so far. His discography, his features, his EPs, what he's been doing creatively, I just feel like he is at the forefront of New York artistic expression uh, and has the largest discography to really show for his greatness. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Boogie with the hoodie, you already know what's going on. I'm gonna step out, he gonna step in, all right? Yeah, check let's up go. on Lexi Gates, uh, Lexi Gates. You know the vibes, we gonna read uh, uh, just a label. Let's get it. Mm, I love these strings. <clears throat> I'm not all the way through Better Off Alone. I think I'm about two thirds of the way through. I don't know. This, like, this feels too, um, like, this feels too songy. Like, oh, whoa, 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 I'm all the way at the end there. Uh, like, this feels like it could have been a song off of Better Off Alone. I think I like the, I don't know if this is on purpose, but the purple kind of fits the theme of Better Off Alone as well, if you've seen the album cover. <clears throat> I don't know, the way he just came in, he was a little too, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, if, if you're going to do pre-written, but, you know, and, and I guess, oh, hold on, see, and this is, let me, let me get myself a neck, that's my bad, so, and he, and he labels this, so he's got a couple, this is a couple songs that he's performing, okay, 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 let's see what he got, let's see what you got. <clears throat> Very talented artist, let's get into it. Ooh, 
that was a ooh, I was a dog on a leash until you heard me. And that's cool because that is um uh, I think it I think the term is a homophone where you got like a word that sounds like two things. So he said he's a dog on a leash, like basically like he was a wild like out so that means two things, right? He was outside, he was getting to the shit, he was getting to the, you know what I'm saying, like to the girls, all that stuff. But it also means that like he wasn't, he was on his grind too. And so until you heard me means until you listened to me, until you heard me, until you heard what I had to say. But like dogs obviously get heard, like heard it in. So it's also until you took me in, right? So that's kind of a homophone uh, entendre right there. I was a dog on a leash until you heard me. I wish I knew I mean 30 inches before 30. Mm. Try to make it out, niggas in the street try to murder me. Put the ooh, why he flex like that? No mercy? Okay, I see you. Uh, little car scheme, little car scheme. Niggas in the street try to murder me. Put the cotton blue on him, making me no mercy. I'm gonna finish that in toast. My time goes. I don't know what's out of yeah, oh, I do know. Yeah, yeah, never mind. I do know this song. Damn. I think that was a TJ diss. Like, I don't know who shot you, but I think I do. I don't, and I can't even be mad at these subs because I don't know why TJ went out of his body to claim it was Highbridge. That was such a terrible song, too. Oh, my God. I don't know why he did that. That's the same thing uh, Don said. Yeah, and this is this will be maybe be like a small little album review, like on these two little songs. Um, there's like a level of there's a lot of dysfunction on the album from a boogie's perspective where he's sort of like feels as though he doesn't understand that much about love and how to maintain himself in a relationship and so this sort of general mode of like can you heard me i don't know what's going on this level of inexperience that he feels is very much consistent with the theme of the album and I think it's really powerful even what he said right there. And this is like what be bothering me sometimes because people just be like, oh, like people just be rapping about whatever. They don't even be saying deep stuff. But if you really listen and just take people where they're at, no, you can find some depth. Even right here with what he said, you know, you can sort of blame him for his debaucherous lifestyle, but he's openly saying here that no, he has that lifestyle because, um, and I don't personally consider it debaucherous, but whatever. Um, but you know, you you could be mad at him for his, you know, uh, for his whole tendencies, but at the end of the day, he's doing that because he doesn't want to confront his feelings, and he knows that he doesn't properly. He he knows like he feels like I'm I'm not good at the relationships if I'm not good at the intimate getting to know you style so I'm gonna run to this other thing because it makes it it's more comfortable to me and that's a deep and interesting message message that a lot of young you know men face uh, it, it's a dilemma that a lot of young men face it's like do I do what's comfortable to me or do I learn this new school new skill potentially hurting people in the future. Did I not get this far? Because I know that was they shooting. This is Iron Man. I think I got here. Oh, I think this was the sample I liked. I can't remember. 
13 years old, I'm 45, if I had you by my side. I wow, both of these opening lines are really good. 13 years old, I had a 45, wow. It's interesting because, like, you know, I think A Boogie falls a little bit more into the Drake category of, like, were you really shooting like that? Um, because, like, he doesn't have any, like, official gang ties, and he doesn't put it in his music enough to where it's, like, a real, like, thing that he super, super talks about. But I think, unlike Drake, we know that he grew up in a certain environment, in a certain environment that was really, really rough. Um, and, like, it, it's a lot more believable at, that, at the very least, he's been through some stuff and he was involved in stuff, you know. But I think, like, I think he's generally one of those people where, like, he stays out the way, but he's still willing to, you know what I'm saying? Um, not one of the full, like, Anneli Chopper, Chief Keith type. Cause... 13 years old, 45. If I had you by my side, I would have saw the signs. You was heard before, Gabby. I was average. Outside playing with sticks, dropping natties and I drop five men on the carpet, pull in the back seat and I get fly like a ladder. I'm a clip large, living large, I can start before they call me. It's so interesting how A Boogie can fly through so much subject matter in such a small amount of time. It's really incredible to me. I don't know, like, I do have certain criticisms for Better Off Alone. I, I'm, I don't know if they're going to sustain, but I'd say in a vacuum, it's really impressive how much ground he's able to cover um, and how he's able to discuss... Like, I think a lot of people, like, they talk about their sort of, like, hood lifestyle and their love separately. But A Boogie does a really good job of saying, like, no, this affected this, right? And then you're making it worse through this. Like, he's, like, it, it, he's not going to, like, force it down your throat. He's not going to tell you the whole story entirely. But he's really good at sort of discussing, like, how his pain affects his love life. I think it's really interesting. Like I said, it's not, like super super like it's not like as clear as i don't know actually I, I don't really have an example of someone who does it like super super well um but like it's it's not like a, the, the clearest it could be but it's definitely very good I love those. I love the cutesy lines. I love the cutesy lines. I, I'm always going to, you're always going to get a W, a nod for a cutesy line out of me, man. Ain't nothing wrong with one of those, bro. I got you. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. I like how he sort of changes the nudge. Rep tar, play hard. I like how he changes the enunciation right there. That was really, really good. Man, I miss doing this. I love, I love, I, I, I miss making videos, but the passion is definitely coming back. I, I definitely say, like, passion isn't, you know, it's definitely sort of regaining. Uh, fell into, fell in love with code for a really long time, and I'm still in love with code, uh, as you all will see at some point. Got a video about that coming, well, I guess a year from now, but it, it's, it's in the works, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 I miss this, because I, 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 I'm developing my own unique style of, of analyzing music, and I, I feel myself getting back into it. Ah, okay, okay, them rhymes were a little bit, uh, ignore, hard, cost, ah, okay. That felt like it was kind of like he he set up the very like uh like hardcore syllable like sort of the the, the pronunciation but then kind of used it as a way to like uh sort of brush over some heavy slant rhymes.
Slime color bubble, do you know how much this jacket costs? I can't even ignore my feelings when I'm in it. I admit it, you be bringing out my soft sauce. Would you tell me that you love me? They say that all the time, and I know it's lies. Oh, you don't really love me, and I already know. I don't, some, I will say, I don't know if he's performing this live or if this is just like an MP3. Sometimes I don't get these sorts of things just because it feels like if you're not going to, I I don't know if he's performing it live. If he is performing it live, that's insane. Um, Because quality is insane. But sometimes I just feel like, why are you, if you're not going to do it live, like what are you even doing? Like you're, see what I'm saying? But I don't know. Maybe this is like a mini concert. Maybe this he's got like background vocals and he's doing something with that. I don't know. It, it just sometimes I feel like, why are you doing it live if you're just. Or what's the point of doing a freestyle if you're not going to do anything live? You said I should love me. I already know. Not bad. I like both of those two songs. His energy was cool. I want to see a Boogie perform at some point. Definitely want to see a Boogie perform at some point. Let me know what y'all thought of this in the comment section below. With that being said, peace, y'all.